Hi all, this is Ade from Ayulayan Academy presenting to you an A-level physics problem specifically on mechanics and discussing um, the changes in energy of a bungee jumper. Now the question at hand says that a student was asked the following question. Describe the variation in energy of a bungee jumper from the moment the jumper is released to the lowest point that the jumper reaches. The student wrote in response, initially, the fact that the jumper has gravitational potential energy, which is converted into elastic potential energy, as the course stretches. At the lowest point in the jump, all of the gravitational poten potential energy has been converted to elastic potential energy. Part A discussed the student's answer, highlighting any incorrect or missing physics. Now, what the student said isn't necessarily incorrect, but there are missing physics. The question um, in the body of the of, of the paragraph was the fact that the students should describe the variation in energy of a bungee jumper. Now there are there are three or four um, energies or changes in energy. Okay. The first one is the fact that um, the bungee jumper, in order to get up to that height and jump, the bungee jumper gained a uh, GPE. So bungee jumper gained a GPE from moving to a height. Now I'm going to do all of this in bullet points just to make it uh, more succinct. So the bungee jumper would have gained GPA for moving to a height H within the Earth's atmosphere. So if we take our reference point as the ground, to move upwards within the Earth's atmosphere, we must do work against the um, against the force of gravity. Okay, this manifests as a gain in gravitational potential energy, and is given by the expression: change in GPE is equal to your mass multiplied by the gravitational field of the planet you are on, multiplied by the height that you travel upwards within the gravitational field of said body or planet that you are on, okay? So the bungee jumper gained GPE for moving to a height h. Now, when the bungee jumper jumps, we have to immediately acknowledge that that GPE, the gravitational potential energy that the bungee jumper would have gained from traveling that height, is now being transferred into something else, okay? So as the bungee jumper falls from a height, the gravitational potential energy that the jumper um, gained in the first place is now transferred into transferred or converted into something else. So GPE is converted as soon as jumper jumps. Okay. Now that's a very general statement. So. In the next couple of bullet points, we are now going to be more specific. When and how is this GPE being converted? So initially, we have to acknowledge that the bungee cord is slack, okay? By slack, I mean it basically looks like, looks like uh, it's not under tension, it's not stretched out, okay? So initially, cord, the bungee jumper cord, is slack. Now, because it's slack and offers no resistance against the jumper falling, the bungee jumper is able to fall in free fall. Okay? So initially, cord is slack, jumper is in free fall. What this means is that for the most part, all of the GPE is being converted into kinetic energy. So, change in gravitational potential energy is equaling a change in kinetic energy and for those who don't know uh, kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared so the faster you are moving the more kinetic energy you have okay however we need to make a small correction and that's the fact that this is not a perfect situation okay it's not frictionless because the bungee jumper is falling through air now, air is a medium, it's a physical medium. There are particles in the air, gas particles, oxygen, argon, 
carbon dioxide, nitrogen, these all exert a friction force, air resistance, on the jumper as the jumper falls through the air. So we need to make a small note that there is a component of friction or air resistance opposing the motion of the jumper. The jumper will therefore lose some of this energy to those frictional forces. So jumper loses, that's the wrong spelling for loses, loses some of the energy to frictional forces, i.e. air resistance. Okay, so there's work being done. There's work being done against those frictional forces. And that work being done is the energy lost to those frictional forces. Okay, now there comes a point where the bungee cord is no longer slack. So this is about the equilibrium point. Okay, this is about the equilibrium point. So about equilibrium point cord is no longer slack and begins to stretch okay because it begins to stretch there is now elastic potential energy being built up in the cord this is what causes it to snap back, okay? In, in physics or in, in the topics of energy conservation or the transfer of energy, when you squash or stretch a spring or a stretchy string, you are building up elastic potential energy because it's always going to want to oppose the change which caused it to stretch or squash, okay? This is a restoration force. And this restoration force is given off because there was energy stored inside that spring or that string, okay? So we need to say, um, so about the equilibrium point, the cord is no longer slack and begins to stretch. So GPE and KE is being converted into elastic potential energy. So EPE, elastic potential energy. And this is very, very important. So I'm going to box that in, I'm going to box that in um, uh, red, okay? Last bullet point is the fact that at lowest point, at lowest point, so when all of the kinetic energy has been used up, at lowest point, all Ke, has been converted into elastic potential energy, okay? Cord is now under max tension and will eventually Propel jumper back up since elastic potential energy will be converted into Ke once more. And that really is all there is to it. That really is all there or those to it, okay? Um, if you were to write this in a paragraph, it would have, it would flow more. But the point is, is that um, when you, when you go bungee jumping, you go up a certain height and you gain gravitational potential energy. When you jump off said height, that gravitational potential energy um, gets transferred into kinetic energy as you fall due to gravity, due to the Earth's gravity. Now, 
during this free fall, the cord is still slack, but there reaches a point. This is called the equilibrium point. There reaches a point where um, you're falling down a certain distance that the cord is no longer slack, but begins to act under tension. Now, once it starts acting under tension, you are effectively stretching the cord out. That means the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy is now being converted into GPE. I mean, uh, EPE, elastic potential energy. So before it was just gravitational potential energy, GPE, being converted into kinetic energy, KE. Past the equilibrium point, GPE and KE are being fully converted into EPE, elastic potential energy. We must also not forget that while the jumper is falling, um, some of the energy that could have been converted between KE and GPE, GPE or EPE is lost due to air resistance. We won't get that energy back. Um, there comes a point at the lowest point of the uh, bungee jumpers jump that all of the GPE and KE has been converted into EPE, which is elastic potential energy. And then I made an extra note here that um, if the bungee jumper was to continue to be allowed to, you know, be in motion, all that elastic potential energy would then begin to convert into kinetic energy as the cord snaps back. Now part two, or part B, says the bungee jumper has a mass of 80 kilos uh, and is in free fall through the air. So this is basically uh, what's going on in the initial part of the bungee jumper's jump. At a particular instant, the force of the air resistance acting on the bungee jumper is 285 newtons. Calculate the acceleration of the jumper. In any question where you are given forces and the question seems to be talking about acceleration or vice versa, we must always think of Newton's second law. Newton's second law. And this simply is F equals M A. The, uh, the little hat, the arrow hat simply detail that this is a vec they are vectors so force and acceleration are vectors and they have not only magnitude but direction okay now um f equals ma now the the bungee jumper is falling under the effect of gravitational force it's i.e the bungee jumper's weight okay and there was there was an opposing force or friction against the bungee jumper so the actual forces f the actual force is acting on the bungee jumper. We can expand it as so. So the forces are equal to mg, the weight of the bungee jumper, minus um, fa, which is just my uh, symbol for air resistance. So exp um, substituting that into Newton's second law, it's going to be mg minus f. A equals M A. Now, if we take G as equal to, I'm going to make my life easier. If we take G as equal to 10, so G equals 10 meters per second squared. And then we know that the mass is equal to 80 kilos. And then we are told that the air resistance is 285 newtons so fa equals 285 newtons then it's a simple case of plugging these values in rearranging and solving for the acceleration so it's going to be um, 80 multiplied by 10 divided by 285 equals 80 again times the acceleration which we are trying to find. So 800 take away 285 over 80 gives us the acceleration. And if I just plug this quickly into my calculator, we get a value of approximately uh, 6.4. 6.44 meters per second 
squared. And that is the acceleration of the bungee jumper as he or she falls in free fall. Okay. Um, so this is before the cord gets gets tight, taut rather. So there are no forces acting on the bungee jumper except the force of gravity propelling the bungee jumper downwards and the force of air resistance trying to oppose his or her motion. I hope you found this quick video um, educational and it basically marks our journey throughout the uh, A-level physics course. So there will be more questions. Uh, they won't be random. They will be as if you were doing the modules uh, consecutively yourself. Um, so I aim to have these videos out about once a week throughout um, the A-level physics course as well as the A-level maths course. So hopefully, if if I stick to the schedule, there will be two videos, two tutorial type videos per week. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.